I'm very glad to be here with, with you, Greg. I'm great. I'm very glad to have you here. Thank you. I've been looking forward to this for, for a while. Um, so I guess uh, what we're doing here is talking about the history of the club, the history of the neighborhood, and the history of the general flow of, of life at certain times here in Providence on North Main Street. I hope it turns out to be a little bit of propaganda also because I'd like the purpose of our conversation to encourage support from the community to, in, in the face of the COVID um, emptiness of Providence turning into a ghost town, so many spirits are in this place. So I thought one of the purposes of our conversation here, first of all, the word parlor means derived from the idea of conversation because we have very much this neighborhood in common and this space in common in different ways, in different eras maybe. So the parlor was established in November 1st, uh, 2012. So we're, we're uh, actually <laughs> we would have celebrated eight years November 1st. I have had many chapters of my life at that bar because when the circus came to town, they grazed their elephants in my backyard. And uh, the circus clowns would come to the bar here, and I would sneak in to look at the acrobats and the clowns, and even the freaks, because there used to be sideshows associated with that as well. So that was one part of my boyhood, my early, very early boyhood when I, when I was a little kid. Tramps would get off the train and they would live in tents. When the gypsies came through in the spring and in the fall, they lived in my backyard, and they'd go around and ask people in the Depression era, in the 1930s, if they could give you, if they could fix something that you had broken in your house, a pot or a pan, in return for which you would give them a cup of soup. So the Depression was here, and the sports teams were here, but there were a lot of things, almost unbelievable things, that could happen here. There were no fences in the neighborhood at all. Your property melted into your neighbor's property. So we could walk across that meadow where the elephants had been, and she would come here to this bar. Across the street there was a diner called Topps Gaylord. And my GI uncle, he took a magic marker and turned the walls of the coffee shop, the diner, into a bar. By, and it was called the Corinthian Room because he liked to draw female figures in costumes or naked. All the GI veterans coming home would bring their dates to that bar across the street from here. But I liked this bar better because it had more spirituality to it and cheaper drinks <laughs> than you could get across the street in those days. I would place myself here, and my mother may be able to correct me, but I believe it was... 1977, 1978. And um, so I lived right up the street from Greg's restaurant. So my memories of this area were the Sears. <clears throat> I remember coming off the highway and looking at this, this bar and then just being amazed that there was a house. On top of the bar. On top of a bar. <laughs> and it just seemed like such a cool idea to me. and. and such an amazing, like, oh, of course you would live above your job. Like, that would be the best thing ever, you know? And the it Italian would be fun, Renaissance. You know? Yeah. Um, so, and I just remember it being kind of, you know, I remember taking the bus from here with my mother walking down the hill to take the bus in, in front of Sears, and Sears was, like, very robust with energy and people shopping, and they had such a, it was, I, it's funny, I was born in Miriam Hospital. Yeah. Which, when I tell that to people, they're like, well, you were born at Merriam? And I'm like, yeah. Like, they, they birthed children there. So I was born in 1970. And, uh -huh. um, so this area has always had, like, a huge, huge connection to myself and felt comfortable, you know? Uh -huh. um, so I'm, I, as taking over this place and, and encountering people that come in here, maybe that came here 30, 40, 50 years ago. Yeah. And it's really funny because it's always, they kind of walk around and, you know, look around and take it all in. And then 
we end up, you know, starting a dialogue. And um, I always try to dig for information, you know. So mm -hmm. I've heard conversations about ice capades. I've heard the, the ice, conversations. Uh, ice follies, about the ice capades. Yep, the circuses. Um, you know, as a young kid, having older uncles, um, 10 to 12 to 15 years older than me, they were going to shows at the auditorium, yes. seeing these amazing bands. I used to take all the couples on my street to come down um, to the auditorium and then to come here to the bar. Mm -hmm. But that was... Uh, so was that, not to cut you yeah, off, no, sorry, cut but was me that off, a always. usual um, circumstance where people would go to the auditorium and when the show would get out, they would come over Absolute, here? Absolutely, absolutely. That's kind of what it, so I have this, you know, fantasy that Jimi Hendrix had played over at this auditorium. I'm twice. sure he was in here as well. That, well, that's what I tell myself I just, all the time. <laughs> I had all I, different races and kinds of people. There was a time when the post deliverers would come here for a drink in the morning because they'd worked all night long. I actually talked to a retired postal officer who lived down the street that would, that chorus, that same thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you never knew, you, you never could predict what kind of person you would meet here. There are rich people that live in this neighborhood, and there are poor people that live in this neighborhood. It's, it's, it has a great deal of history. I mean, I feel like the parlor, that's what we try to embrace here. You know, it's, you know the unmentioned motto is everybody's welcome. So That's a very good uh, one. As I've, as I've come up in this business, um, you know, I've worked in numerous clubs on the East Coast and the West Coast, and the one thing I always enjoy is to be able to bring people of different walks of life together yes. Yes. Um, in a common space, in a safe space where they can enjoy music and spirits and food. Because I feel like that's the bridge, right? Like that's how we all need to have a, a little deeper understanding of where each other is coming from. Like out, outside of these doors, there's all these divides and these classifications and all this kind of thing. But like when you come in here, you're just people having a good time, relaxing, trying to get away from all that. So the grandson of the original owner was in here. Um, but he told me that he used to run around this bar when he was like a you know, little, little child. He was just very, very happy that the, the, the bar was doing well and I had this energy in here. And he's like, you know, thank you for, for keeping it going. And, it's good to be able to walk into this place that meant something so much to me when I was young and to walk in here as, as an adult and feel the same energies. Uh, it used to be called the penalty box. Right. Yeah. And before that, I don't remember what it was called. I used to just call it the pub. Was there, I th I, from my understanding, the, the penalty box was the original name. That was the original name, yeah. Could you paint a small picture of an average night of the bar when it was the penalty box, like when you would walk into the door? Yeah. Well, there were booths. There were a lot of booths. And uh, it was a very safe place to bring whatever company you, you were keeping. It was secret because it was intimate. Uh, I was a regular. Everybody knew me in here. And I would almost judge people by whether they were happy in here or not. <laughs> I thought if they were I thought if they were happy to be here, they were good people. If they thought that they should be in a fancier place, I thought, they're not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel similar. I, mean, I, was <laughs> 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 I feel like that's a good barometer. Well, from my understanding, the Rhode Island Reds, who no. were one of the first um, professional hockey teams, I believe, and I love this picture because they all have prison uniforms on because <laughs> um, they had a reputation of being rugged. But I love this picture. So from my understanding, um, that the Rhode Island Reds used to play there and the original owner's brother played on the hockey team. And one of my, uh, once again, favorite stories about this club from back then was the hockey players, and I, I, I've heard stories of the hockey rink being surrounded by chicken wire. Yes. Um, which to keep the pucks from hitting the audience yes. and such, which is priceless. And so the hockey players used to walk in here during you know the halftime or in between periods and 
have a beer or two oh, yeah. before they went back oh, absolutely. And, and played, absolutely. played their, you know, the rest of the game, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. But I think what you've added, what you've added, Greg, is the whole idea of music, because I don't remember music from a long time ago. The music that you brought here was homegrown music. Winnie played the, the um, wash, wash board. Mm -hmm. And you came in here and you saw creativity. It's globalized as businesses seem to have become in the world's economic concepts of themselves. Uh, the intimate neighborhood and the intimate bar and even intimate music is now the most important thing. And I really feel that. I agree. I mean, yeah. that's, that's where basic connection and harmony starts, you know. And I've been very blessed. I mean, so I lived here until about eight or nine, I believe, is when we moved out of here. And then I came back at 15. Um, we actually lived on Doyle Ave. And Hope High was where I got, well, I was already kind of interested in music and all, and all that kind of stuff. But at the time, Hope High School had a music magnet. Um, that I was able to study guitar like five days a week and, and music theory three days a week and I was able to play in jazz band and I was able to play in theater band and all of a sudden school made sense to me again. I was like, oh, there's mm -hmm. actually something I can do here, you know? Yeah. And um, that was under the guidance of Stanley Friedman. Oh, yeah. Which is amazing because, you know, that was in 1985, 1986. I graduated in 1989 and then explored music through going to Berkeley College of Music and then coming back to Providence and then moving out to San Francisco and this whole, but music was always the thing that propelled me. Years later, my high school teacher who put me on this path, that led to this, I would say, he had a big part of that whole trajectory, um, standing in this room. Like, you know, so that was my ability to give back something that he had given me. Because now I'm watching him story. stand in this room with this big smile. Three of his students from different eras of his life are standing mm -hmm. here. And mm -hmm. that is the mission of the parlor. It's just like we create these experiences. And music is a huge vehicle to have everybody just let their guard down, Absolutely. listen, and Absolutely. be completely committed to what's going on. You know, It's always been a musical school, Hope High School. Mm. I'm glad you mentioned mm. that. Really glad you did. It was a huge part of, of who I am and what I do. And like, you, like you were saying, even in the music program, you know, there was Laotian kids, there was Spanish kids, there was Cape Verdean kids, there was African kids, there was mixed kids that all sat in a room together and had all varying various knowledge. Um, I feel like it's kind of going through a renaissance. Yeah, I hope, it, I, I hope it is. Yeah, and I feel like as I gr grew up, I was actually skateboarding home from work one night and I found a ticket on the ground to, to uh, go see Jimmy Cliff at the living room, which I was like, oh, my mom likes Jimmy Cliff because she had some vinyl. So I was like, mom, we should go to the show. And she, she couldn't, but she's like, you know, you're welcome to, do, to, go, to go if you want. So I walked over to Promenade and, and was just blown away by Jimmy Cliff and then Years later, I went to see Extreme, and from there, I would just start going to the living room all the time. They had matinee shows for the kids. It was an all-ages thing, so you could go there. I went to see hippie shows there. I, it just opened up this world to me um, that I wanted to be a part of. So when I came back from going to college, I ended up working at the living room uh, through a friend of mine, Rappi Champagne, who, who got me the job there. And I started this amazing relationship with Randy Heen. Uh, who went from boss to mentor to father figure to, to best friend, which gave me the, um, and my partners, Aaron, uh, Janig, and Robert Uranium, gave us the gusto to be like, hey, we could actually probably do this. Um, what I'm trying to do here, uh, I just want to be a part of that whole, you know, booming situation, which I think. The Celebrity Club was part of this neighborhood as well, you know. All, all the great black musical artists came to Providence. They couldn't stay in the hotels downtown. 
So they stayed with the musicians who performed in the little bars. Seriously, mm -hmm. I knew some of them, who would brag, I made pancakes for Sarah Vaughan. <laughs> I used to hear that from people. That's awesome. And yeah. <laughs> I wish I made pancakes yeah. for Yeah. <laughs> and um, and this, this, the celebrity club, you walked along North Main Street, and then you just, at a, one of the junctions uh, near Doyle Avenue, you'd walk around the corner where the Marriott is now. There was a, a little, little bar the size of this, but all the greatest musicians in the world. I remember Slim Gaylord was there, and... Uh, Louis Armstrong was there. But every 10 years, our culture changes. Yeah, definitely. You know, it does. Yeah. But this place stays <laughs> and flourishes. <laughs> That's the part of his mission. It's like we're going to provide a good experience with something that you may not be aware of or maybe even into, but you can walk in this door, you can have a drink, you're going to meet some cool people, and you're going to, hit, you're going to get some quality entertainment. If it's music, if it's theater, if it's a variety show, whatever it is, you're gonna come in here and it's gonna be something that you can vibe with and you know, walk out the door and feel, feel a little better than you did when you walked in.